the second part of 6.3. We're just going to quickly review the domain and then finish those composite functions at the end. In that first set of examples, f of x equals 2x plus 4. And remember, that is a linear function. Anytime you have a linear function and there's no particular rule for x, the domain is x equals all real numbers. And what that indicates is you could really plug in anything you want for x and get an output. Another way to describe all real numbers using the symbol instead of writing that out is an R with like an extra line through it. So this symbol resonates with the phrase all real numbers. You could do one or the other, write out all real numbers or write that symbol. When you have a variable that has something unique to it, like h of x, in this equation, because the exponent was negative 1, it's no longer linear. And if we apply our properties of exponents, remember when we drop that x down to the denominator, the rule for fractions is that denominators can't equal 0. Anytime you have a negative exponent for x that doesn't simplify, this will be your domain. Down at the bottom, we have the four operations on functions. Adding and subtracting, pretty straightforward. Even multiplying just might include a FOIL. Uh, but when you get to that division, anytime you have a fraction and maybe a variable in the denominator, uh, you're going to have to have a restriction on your domain. So down below, I just kind of gave you some rules to follow. I'd take some time to write these down. If you have fractions, remember if there's a variable in the denominator, we have to recognize that the denominator can't equal zero. Sometimes we'll have to solve like we did in our example up above, but sometimes we won't. So remember over here where we had 5x over x plus 2? Because that's in the denominator, we had to say that the domain, or the domain rule is that the denominator can't equal 0. We wrote this down already, but just kind of refreshing it for you. To get x by itself to isolate your variable, the, the domain would be x can't equal negative 2. We could plug in anything else for that fraction, and it would still be valid. Radicals are another common type of solution that we'll get where it'll require a restriction or a rule for your domain. Anytime you have that square root on the inside, remember only numbers that are not negative are valid for inside of a square root. That would make the domain for a radical greater than or equal to zero. And sometimes, like up above with that x plus 2, if there's something more than x on the inside, we have to solve for it. Now over here on the right, I wrote rational exponents. So it depends on the type of rational exponent you have, what your rule will be for the domain. For example, if you have an odd root in your rational exponent, the root being the denominator, so that would be like the 3, we can take the root of a positive or negative number, so the domain here would be all real numbers. Remember we can do that little r symbol? But if you have a root that's even, like 1 half, 1 half defaults to a square root. And that would make your domain greater than or equal to 0. That way only positive numbers and 0 are valid for x. When we add and subtract different functions, if our variables have rational exponents, remember we have to have like terms to combine the numerators. Because both f of x and g of x had a rational exponent in them and the root was even, their sum and difference would have the same domain. The only way this will work is when x is greater than or equal to 0. So that's how we got that domain answer on the right. For c and d down below, m of x and n of x, they're both technically linear. When we took their product, it became quadratic, but we could still plug in anything we wanted for x. That's why our domain was all real numbers, or that symbol that I wrote on the other side. And that last one, when we divide them, even though they're linear originally, in that fraction, the denominator can't equal zero. And that's why the domain for that last quotient was x cannot equal two. The last part of 6.3 has us evaluating composite functions. When you take the composition of two functions, you're taking the output for one function and making that the input for the other function. So remember from the video, to find g of f of 5, we evaluated f of 5 first. And that answer plugged into g of x, and that's how we ended up with 98. Make sure you have all those steps written out to use as a resource on your homework. 
At the bottom, the last part that we need to get through is if you want to write something in general composition form. Notice in the parentheses, I don't have a number, I just have x. What this allows us to do is find the composition of two functions no matter what x equals. So we can just kind of figure out with x, and then x will be in our answer. It works just the same as it did for a through d, only we'll have x instead of just a number value. All right, so let's try it. f of g of x. So by definition, we evaluate that inside function first. g of x. If you look back up above, remember g of x equals 2x squared. That's the output for g of x. By definition for the composite function, that becomes the input for f of x. So now it's going to be f of 2x squared instead of just plain x. So when you see that on the left, that means wherever you see x in the f of x function, you plug in that parenthesis f of x was linear, it was 3x minus 8. So I'm going to write my 3, but then I'm going to put, instead of just x, I'm going to put that 2x squared in its place, and then minus 8. From here, we just simplify if possible. We can combine these two coefficients for a product of 6x squared minus 8, and there's really nothing else to do there. The general compos or composition form of f of g of x is 6x squared minus 8. Watch what happens when we reverse the composition. Instead of f of g of x, we now have g of f of x. Remember, by definition, we're just going to work inside out. f of x is the inside function, and f of x equals 3x minus 8. That is the output for f of x. That output now becomes the input for g of x. So instead of x, we're going to substitute in 3x minus 8. g of x is 2x squared. We're going to start with 2, but instead of x squared, we're going to square that 3x minus 8. And anytime we square a parenthesis that has either addition or subtraction, the only correct way to do this is to FOIL. We can't just square individual parts. We're going to have to FOIL that out. We're going to leave the 2 until the very end, and I'm just going to write 3x minus 8 twice. If we FOIL this much, we get 9x squared minus 24x minus another 24x and then negative 8 times negative 8 is positive 64. Now remember, we still have that 2 out in front. But even before I combine or be, yeah, before I combine them, I'm going to simplify the inside for that bracket. That would give me 9x squared minus 48x plus 64. And now I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 2 in to all my terms. The general composition of g of f of x would be 18x squared minus 96x plus 128. That would be the general composition. All right, one more. When you have a composition of the same function, the same rule applies. It just looks kind of interesting. So if we take f of x, we already know that equals 3x minus 8. That output is the new input for f of x once again. But now instead of just x, it's 3x minus 8. Whoops. And there we go. So wherever we see x in the f of x function, we're now going to plug in that entire parenthesis. So I have 3 times x, but now it's going to be 3x minus 8. And then we have minus 8 again. So we took it all, the, the parentheses, and plugged it in right there, but we left everything else the same. To simplify, let's eliminate the parentheses by distributing the 3 in. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times negative 8 is negative 24. And if we subtract 8 from negative 24, we're going to get a general comp composition of 9x minus 32. 
So it works just the same as the other ones when you have the function doing it with a composition within its own function. And that's it for 6.3. So your assignment is the 6.3 CYU worksheet, and it's 1 through 25 all.